Hi. This is Orca. Orca pulls CO2 directly from the atmosphere, about 4,000 tons every year. It's the world's first and still only plant that does this at commercial scale. Uh, it was built in 2021 in Reykjavik uh, um, in Iceland. It runs 100% on re renewable heat and renewable energy. Um, and we're now scaling it just next door to the 10 times of the size. What do we do with Orca? We capture CO2 from the air and we permanently remove it and return it to stone. And we work with some of the world's leading companies, such as JP Morgan, UBS, Microsoft, BCG, Swiss Re, PwC, and many others, um, on their journey towards net zero, helping them remove their unavoidable emissions with a 100% additional permanent, measurable, and third-party verified solution. Uh, we were recently named one of CNBC's top 50 disruptor companies alongside others like OpenAI, um, and we're now ready to scale. So, as my previous speaker also pointed out, um, it's a big problem we have to solve. This roadmap tells us where we are on emissions today and where we need to be by 2050. And science tells us we need to reduce by 90% and we need to remove 10% 10, 10 the rest and then we need to go to net negative and clean up the atmosphere and pull out what's already in there. Now, for the reduction pathway, we have a lot of methods, renewable energy, electrification of transport, and many other pathways, including traditional carbon capture and storage. For removals, there's not that much out there that is measurable, additional, and credible. And the problem we have to solve is gigantic. Five to 10 billion tons every year by 2050. To give you a size uh, idea, 10 billion tons, that's as much as the oil and gas industry emits today. And that's what we need to do in reverse by 2050 every year. Now, there is a technology that does that. that, does that. It's been around for a couple of years. Uh, it's called trees and other nature-based solutions, and it works. It's really good. We're big fans. Um, we need to continue to invest in credible projects and measurable projects. Unfortunately, it won't be enough to solve the problem. We simply don't have enough land, enough water, enough seedlings available. And a lot of these solutions are not permanent solutions. So they are temporary help, and we need to continue to invest in them, but they won't be able to solve a 10 billion ton problem. We need solutions that are much more scalable, that require less land, that require less resources, and that are fully permanent. So how does such a climate time machine work? Um, we build plants, and we operate these plants, and we build them out of modular units like Lego bricks. These units are 40-foot container size. They can easily be shipped, they can easily be built, and they're made up of individual segments. And they pull CO2 directly from the atmosphere, so not from a smokestack, at pretty low concentration, 430 parts per million. Um, take the CO2 out of the air and store, store it permanently and let out CO2-free air. And if you zoom in to one of these six segments, it essentially looks like this. It's a big metal box. Uh, with a big fan on one end, because we need to pull a lot of air through, um, and an inlet on the other side. And in the middle is a filter material, proprietary. Um, and as the air pulls through, that filter captures the CO2 molecules, and it only captures CO2, it's very selective, um, and holds onto it, forms a weak chemical bond. And that process lasts about three hours. After three hours, uh, the filter is full, and we move to phase two, we close the collector, uh, we heat it up to about 100 degrees C, 100 degrees C, boiling a cup of tea. Um, needs some energy, but we have access to a lot of different sources of energy that can generate 100 degrees C. Um, at that point, we can break the weak chemical bonds, we can suck out the pure CO2, and then we can either reuse it, like we're doing in our plant here in Switzerland, or we can permanently store it and remove it from the atmosphere. And how does this look like in Iceland? Our plant in the middle, we get our energy, all of our energy, heat, and electricity from a geothermal power plant there. Um, we run our plant, we concentrate the CO2, we liquefy it, and then we send it down a pipeline to these little igloos that our partners at Carbfix operate, and they inject uh, the CO2 300 to 500 meters underground into basalt rock, and uh, uh, within about two years, that CO2 is fully mineralized. It really essentially turns to stone. 
You can see what this looks like. These are collector containers. Here is where we inject the CO2. Uh, and here is the permanently bound uh, CO2, the white spots in the basalt rock. And that cannot be released anymore for ten thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. How do we make this a business? So we work both with corporates as well as individuals. For corporates, we typically do a long-term roadmap where we remove over a period of 10 or more years um, part of their unavoidable emissions for a fixed price. Um, and we, we do this not as an alternative to reductions, but we do this for a lot of companies that have already reduced or have, have already a clear target and a path how to reduce. But the, uh, every company will end up at some point with unavoidable emissions that they cannot reduce further. And that's what we use direct air capture for. We do this for a lot of clients in the financial industry, in the professional service industry, um, but more and more also in the technology and consumer goods industry. There's still some capacity available, but we're running out fast. Please do reach out if you're interested. Um, and on the other side, um, we also work with private individuals. Some of you might already be customers. We have um, almost 20,000 now today. Uh, subscription-based service model where we help you remove part of your emissions uh, and uh, lock it away permanently. We also work with prominent individuals such as Bill Gates or, for example, with Coldplay. If you've been at the Coldplay concert recently, you might have seen this, this graph where we help them remove some of the emissions that they generate. We're based basically one train stop away from here, right, right in Zurich. Um, uh, we have more than 400 people, most of whom are here in Zurich. Um, we have our plants in Iceland. We're now heavily expanding into the United States. We raised uh, over 810 million US dollars uh, uh, to date. Uh, and we've been in the field. The company was founded in 2009, and we've been in the field for more than 10 years. Our technology is the best in the business, but our true competitive advantage is we've been doing this in the real world and not just in the laboratory. Um, and we've learned through that. What's next? I already talked about Mammoth a little bit. So Mammoth is going to be 10 times larger than Orca. It's also going to be in Iceland. It's also going to be powered by geothermal energy. Um, and it's a massive scale up to what we've done before. Um, it will start operation in the first quarter of next year. Um, and we're very excited uh, about doing this next level of scale up. But you might say, OK, 40,000 tons, that's still a drop in the bucket compared to the 10 billion that I mentioned before. How do we scale this? We already built the plant in Switzerland, Orca, and now Mammoth. And the next iteration is we're going to build these plants to a scale of 1 million tons per plant. Um, we were recently selected by the US Department of Energy for a grant of up to 600 million US dollars to do this in the US. Um, of course, this will need a lot of investment, and it will also need time, because there's, um, it's big assets. But we think we can build three of these assets until end of the decade. And we think then the technology is ready to be scaled, similarly to how renewable energy was scaled, um, to the, the, the tens of millions, the hundreds of millions, uh, and the billions of tons until 2050, where we need to be. So I hope I could inspire some of you. And we hope to inspire many more to remove carbon dioxide from the air. Thank you.